Hi everyone, welcome back. In all my open PLC examples, I have been using ladder logics. However, there are other languages like ST, SFC, and FBD. In this video, we will program an industrial process using FBD, and you will see how easy it is to use this language. Let's get started. <music> subscribe if you've not done that already and also press on the notification bell this way you always be notified whenever I upload new videos okay so to start with this is the setup we have two material that we need to glue together and we have an industrial press sensor B detects if there is material on the workbench and if the operator press the start button the piston of the cylinder moves towards the material and presses it. When the sen when sensor A detects that the piston has fully moved, it will then start a timer which will delay for 5 seconds, putting the pressure on the material for 5 seconds. And after 5 seconds, it needs to de-energize and move back to its original position. There will be a counter which will also count the number of works that we have compressed or glued together now let's move on to start with I create a new project in open PLC select a folder and then name the folder test underscore FB select it and now change the name to FB underscore test and then select the language FBD click OK Okay, I add variables now. The first variable I add is the start button. I change the data type to a boo. And then the address is ix0.0. And I click on it and add the next variable, which is our sensor A. Address has already been assigned. I click on it again and then add sensor B with address.2. And finally, I add the output, which is the press drive, and then change the address to kill x0.0. Okay, and now you can use this section or use that. I click on this particular block, click on the open space, and now I need to select an AND gate. I go to the bitwise logic and then select an AND gate. Okay. Now what do we need to do, I need to add an input to it. So I move in and then add a label, which is our sensor B. So when this sensor detects there is a material, it will send logic 1 to input 2. And then input 1, I will assign it to our start button. I select start and position it correctly connect it to input 1 but before then I need to add a bit of logic because I need to hold this signal on so I add an OR gate and then position it correctly to do this I assign this one to input 2 and then the input 1 of the OR gate I connect it to the output of the AND gate okay and then I connect the output to the input of the last AND gate input. Okay, so let's do look at it quickly. So when a start is pressed, signal moves to the input of the AND gate, that is input 1. When a material is already detected, input 2 is also active, and then we can get an output coming on. Great. I now add the output, which is the press drive. To it so I connect it at the output of the AND gate and this is going to drive our cylinder down whenever it's active okay and now add another AND gate because we need to time whenever the cylinder is fully extended I add a label so I can add the sensor A to it I 
connect sensor A to input 2 of the AND gate and then connect input 1 to the output of the AND gate so that when the piston is down or active that is when the sensor will also work okay I add the timer to it I connect the output of the AND gate to the input of the timer which is an on delay timer and then I need to give it a preset time value so I say T hash 5 seconds indicating 5 second timing of this timer so that the pressure will be put on the material for 5 seconds I now need to increase the input of this AND gate so I send it to 3 inputs AND gates and then click OK and then connect the third input but before then I need to add a NOT gate because I only want to stop the process when the timer has timed out okay and then connect this section to the input of the AND gate okay great so we are set up now we now need to count the number of press that we've done so I add an up counter connect the count input to the output of the timer and now add a label and then give it a fixed count of 100 okay I position it correctly and connect it to the great now let's do our simulation I click on this particular button to compile simulation is ready I click on this Google to go online great now this is our start button but before then I need to activate sensor B indicating that there's material on the bench so I click on toggle and OK and we can see that it's at true logic I can now press on the start button I toggle that one too as well and then we can see that the output is on I toggle it back off remember it's a momentary switch we can see the output is still on by the help of the all gate that we use as a hold on now I activate this fully extended switch of the, of the cylinder and we can see the timer has started counting and immediately the time is due we can see that the process has stopped and now go or monitor the output and we can see the output has gone up false now let's test the code with our Arduino PLC board okay I need to add a bit of modification since my input is pulled up I'll add a NOT gate to these very two inputs the start I need to negate it and then the sensor A I need to negate it as well wire them up quickly great I now click on the upload I select my port and then select my board which is Arduino Nano I check the IOS it's okay and then I check the communication and then enable the RTU modbus and then click on the transfer to the PLC okay we can see that the compilation is ongoing and then the upload is done Now I close this particular window and now let's monitor it using the debugging. I click on the debug. Great, I have this interface. I select the serial RTU, change the ID to 1, and then select the port. The board rate remains the same. I click on connect and we can see activity on the board indicating that it's connected. 
and now put on the goggles to go online and we can see what is happening within our PLC within this particular software. Great. Now to test it, I use this cable and then go to the start button or the start input and then activate it and we can see our output is on. Now let me toggle it off. I go to relay B to indicate that someone has taken the material off and we can see the output went off. Okay, good. I turn the output on again and now activate that the cylinder is fully extended. You can see the timer counting and immediately it's done. We can see the output going off. Working perfectly on our PLC board as well. I turn it back on again and now activate again and then turn it back on and now activate the extended sensor and we can see the timer counting and immediately it's done it goes off working perfectly thank you for watching see you in the next tutorial bye bye